So we've got a couple shock absorber samples here. Now these could be used in struts or they're the same basic components for just a normal shock absorber uh, for different standard type uh, suspensions other than something with like a McPherson starter coilover. Um, so we've got our twin tube right here and then we have our mono tube one right here. So the mono tube uh, is a single outside tube. We have our piston assembly attached to our rod. Okay, and then that we have our piston valve. If I push down, fluid is passing through the piston valve. And depending on the size of the holes inside that valve determines how much resistance there is moving up and down as oil passes through it. Now, as the piston and rod move into this actual tube, well, the rod is taking up volume. If the rod's taking up volume, well, that means the fluid has somewhere to go. And that's where this free piston or floating piston at the bottom comes into place or comes into play. So you can see here, we got like a gas at the bottom and this little piston sitting there separating the gas from the oil. Now, as I push down, the piston moves ever so slightly. Okay, now I'm gonna release it. And hopefully you can see the piston there move back up. So piston moving down and I'm gonna release the rod. And you could actually see some turbulence at the bottom and the free piston moving upwards. So that piston is allowing for the rod to take up volume or the oil, the volume um, inside the piston itself or inside the tube itself. Now a twin tube design still has our little piston on the inside with our valving. And the thing here is that you can actually see that we have an inner tube on the inside and then an outer tube on the outside. Now we still have our little center, our piston valve there. And at the very bottom though, we have also what we call a base valve. So fluid is flowing through our piston valve, uh, determining how much resistance there is moving up and down for our shock absorption. And the base valve is basically um, allowing the fluid to transfer between the inner pist or inner tube and the outer tube. So why do we have this inner and outer tube? So you can see the outer tube is not actually full of fluid, okay? So it's kind of not f uh, filled to the top. But again, as our piston and rod come in, volume is being taken up. That fluid has to go somewhere. So the fluid is actually going into the outer tube. So I'm pushing downwards. You can see, maybe I'll move out so you can kind of see that that outer tube is actually filling it with fluid. And then as I release it, you can see the fluid volume is actually dropping on that outer tube. So they're basically doing the same thing, right? We need some way for the fluid, or we need somewhere for the fluid to go as the rods or those, um, the, the rods at the top here are entering into the tubes, displacing fluid volume. So that fluid has to go somewhere. So either we have a twin tube design or a monotube design, both are really achieving the same thing. So I hope this gave you a good kind of visual of what's going on inside the shock absorber. Uh, some of the words or terms that I may have said might be different than something you've read. Um, just like with everything in automotive, there's six different names for the same component. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Or if you have any other input or anything, um, it's always great to hear from others.